Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channel's Television, live from Lagos. A quick reminder from our top stories. Equus Health Ministers adopt a One Health approach to combat disease in the region. Gunmen kidnapped three students and a lecturer of the School of Midwifery in Kaduna just one week after a lawmaker was abducted. All Progressives Congress chieftain gather in Port Hackett to celebrate the achievements of Transport Minister and former River State Governor Rotomi Amechi. And at least 80, 58 are presumed dead from the devastating fire at a residential building in West London earlier in the week. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website is channelcv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelswear where you can find our videos. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channel TV and Channel 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app. Then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. The Kaduna state government and Igbo community leaders in the state have described as false an audio message being circulated on social media that some Igbos travelling to the southeast from the northern part of the country were ambushed and killed by gunmen in Kaduna state. At the joint press conference in Kaduna, representatives of the state government, as well as the Igbo community, decried the situation and called for calm. The October 1 ultimatum allegedly given by some northern youth groups went viral in Kaduna State a couple of days ago, creating unnecessary tension among residents. But now, government officials, top security personnel and Igbo leaders are here to clear the air. The state government is clear it will do everything possible to ensure the safety of those who have made the state their home. It is clear that some dark forces are bent on sowing and creating panic in our communities. The stand of Kaduna State government. As you can see, we are here with the leadership uh, of the Igbo community in Kaduna State. The story is entirely false and mischievous. The Igbo community in Kaduna is safe, like all our communities. Nobody is being attacked and nobody is relocating in fear. A top official of the Igbo community in the state also lends his voice saying no one should vacate the state. I like to ask that people should be mindful of what they say because um, this is a critical moment in our nationhood and um, we should not be able to toy with uh, this unity, security and peace of this country. While many have condemned the ultimatum, the Cardona state government insists it will continue to uphold and defend the right of every resident of the state. In 2013, the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, set up a presidential advisory committee headed by Senator Femi Okurumu to advise the then administration on the framework of a national dialogue. At the end of the consultation across the country, the committee proposed a needed national debate. This next report takes a look at the composition of the conference and some of its recommendations. The clamour for a national conference to solve issues and challenges confronting the country has been on for quite some time now. Former President Goodluck Jonathan, however, heeded the call with the inauguration of a national conference with representatives drawn from all over the country. Thank you very much. The CONFAB was made up of 492 delegates and a six-man conference management team. Of the committee's wisdom. At the conference, one of the major issues that was discussed is the perceived ethnic imbalance threatening the country's coexistence. It is therefore my honor and privilege to present to you six conference officials and 492 delegates for inauguration, Mr. President. Sir.
at the end of the CONFAB in 2014. Some of the recommendations included a modified presidential system of government, which is described as a homemade model of government that combines the attributes of parliamentary and presidential systems. Although the recommendations were submitted to the then president, who promised to implement the recommendations, but a change at the helms of the country's affairs derailed the promise. Since the present administration came on board, however, the clamor for the implementation of the report has not been in short supply, with the latest coming from the National Assembly, where senators have called on the president to submit the report of the 2014 conference to the National Assembly for deliberations. Otherwise, pray with us. Shalom. And joining me on the news at 10 is Senator Femi Okumor Okurumo, the Chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee uh, and also a delegate to the 2014 CONFAB. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the News at 10. A no number way. of recommendations came from the 2014 CONFAB. This administration, however, doesn't consider it as a priority. What do you make of the stance of the government? Well, the stand of the government is consistent with the positions they had taken even while the conference was, being, uh, was going on. The APC as a party was opposed to the conference. As you know, Tinubu, who is the APC leader, was clearly and vigorously opposed to the conference. Of course, it is no secret that the northerners, especially the Fulani North, have always been opposed to the conference and they were vigorously opposed to it. And the North as a whole generally follows the lead of the Fulanis. So the North was opposed to the conference. So since the AB, uh, APC got to power, it is not a surprise that they have been reluctant to even look at the recommendations of the conference. What Buhari said was that he had consigned the recommendations to the archives, meaning that he would not even look at them. This, was, of course, is very shocking. Particularly given the, uh, given the kind of government he has been running, which has heightened the demands now for the implementation of the conference. So is the non-implementation of those recommendations the results of the kind of agitations that we're seeing today? Of course, there are two things we are responsible for the kinds of agitations we are seeing today. The first is that the, the, condition, the, the reasons why the conference were held in the first place was to reduce tension in the country reduce the feeling of marginalization of sections of the country, to make, give everybody a sense of belonging so the tension reduced to Nigeria. Now. But since Buhari got to power, this tension has in fact increased. Feelings of marginalization have increased. Feelings of a sense of uh, not belonging have increased. Feelings that some sections of the country are, are the rulers and some other sections are the conquered people, these feelings have increased. So this has given rise to greater pressure on the government to implement the recommendations because these were all the, all the problems that the conference were, were designed to solve. If, if all the recommendations are implemented, all these feelings of iniquity and injustice will be reduced. But are, are there and there any, will be less tension. My, my apologies. Are there any options available to the government rather than going the way of the 2014 CONFAB? There's no option. There are, there are only two options to reduce tension by implementing the recommendations of the 2014 CONFAB or to, 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 to begin to witness more the demands for separation, demands for people going their own separate ways. But it's restructuring the way forward for this country. Of course, the restructuring is the only way forward. If we have restructuring and, and true federalism, we can keep the country together because then everybody will have a sense of belonging. We will all feel like Nigerians. We, are, we will offer equal Nigerians, and there will be no sense of oppressors and uh, victims. Mm. So, but if we don't have restructuring, we cannot continue to run Nigeria the way it is now. As I have said, the way Nigeria is being run now is that a section of, uh, mm. of Nigerians believe that they are anointed rulers, and, they, and a section that is being treated as if they are, co they are conquered people. Nobody wants to be treated like a conquered people. Mm. So we all want to feel like Nigerians with equal privileges, equal opportunities, and so on. Let so, me ask you this. Yes. What guarantees are there if we go the way of restructuring that everybody will be happy? 
because every section of the country will, have, will be more or less in charge of its own affairs, will manage its own affairs the way it's, the way is best for its people, will control its own resources, will control law and order within its territory, will be able to, if I have its own police, and in, uh, in sections of the country where these existing uh, states want to march, they will be free to march if they want to, subject to referendum. So all this will give every section of the country feelings that they can actually manage their own affairs. They will be more or less autonomous. They will be less dependent on going to Abuja, and they will be less dependent on the autocracy from Abuja that tends to more or less hold everybody by the jugular and control everybody's lives. Okay, in closing this, uh, this interview, uh, the Senate has said to submit the recommendations of the 2014 uh, confab to us. What do you think is going to come out of that statement? Well, if they have genuine intentions, they, I think it's a good first step. But I doubt their intentions. Their intentions may be just to douse the agitation for the implementation while in fact doing nothing. So that instead of the recommendations being buried in the archives, they could now be buried in the shelves of the senators. Because the National Assembly itself, as you know the way the National Assembly is, is constituted, majority of them are northerners. Majority of them come from areas where they don't want a change from the status quo. So majority of them do not want this restructuring. So by asking for the report, they may just want to doubt tension, but just go and sit on the report. So that's why I say, but if their intentions are genuine, mm. if they really want to look into, into, at the recommendations and implement them, then it's a good first step. Senator Femi Okoromo, the Chairman Presidential Advisory Committee on National Conference 2014, and indeed a member of uh, a delegate to the 2014 Confab. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us on the News at 10. You're welcome. The International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, is appealing to the Edo State House of Assembly to fast track the domestication of violence against persons prohibition act 2015 which it says will help to reduce the level of abuse of children mostly the girl child in the state the Edo state chairperson of the international federation of women lawyers mariam edeko made this appeal during a visit to ioba girls college in benin city the Edo state capital to sensitize the students on child rights law as part of activities marking the 2017 Edo Fida Week. In the face of growing reports of violence and abuse of children across the country, the Edo State's chapter of the International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, takes the campaign to sensitize children on the child rights law to secondary schools in the state. The advocacy train gets to Ioba Girls College in Benin City, the state capital, where the students are introduced to the provisions of the law. The chairperson of FIDA, Edo State, Maria Edeko, tells the children to take advantage of the child rights law, which is out to protect their interests. If we look at this law, he says, in all actions, the best interest of a child is to be paramount. And every child should be protected and given necessary care for his well-being. It's our responsibility as parents, as teachers, as elders, as church leaders, as traditional leaders to protect our children. The students are also advised on speaking out against acts capable of causing them harm. What you do if a man does something to you that is not right, immediately go to your parents, go to your teachers, go to the principal, and straight away they should go to Central Hospital. The message gets positive responses from the students and teachers of the college. When the News at 10 returns, a look at the impact of the Apapa Access gridlock on business activities in the area. Join us again.